Well, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a little um, exercise I'm going to do, or at least a little bit of walking with the dog, but I'm also going to go up to the woods at the back of the village here. And as part of that, a few weeks ago, I found an old tractor in a field in the woods, or at least in the middle of a clearing in the woods. And I think that will make an absolutely excellent subject for um, a bit of photography. So I'm going to take the 16 to 35 lens because I want to get really quite tight in on it. And I want to see if I can get a nice shot of it. It's quite early in the morning. It's only 20 past seven and the sun is oh, just above the horizon, as you can see blinding me and I think that low light might improve the, uh, the overall image generally uh, casting some subtle low light on the, the subject so I'm going to get in the car get dog in the car go up the hill taking the 16 to 35 the little baby tripod and I'm also taking the uh, Samyang 100mm lens and I'm, I've also got a 90mm Sony macro lens as well which I'm taking and I'm going to do an experiment between the two of them because having got the FE90 macro lens from Sony, which is an autofocus lens, I'm finding I'm getting far better results with it than I was with the Samyang because I can't get my eye to the eyepiece easily for half the macro shots that I do. Consequently, I'm missing focus quite a lot because the focus highlighting red fringing is it's looking like it's doing the job correctly for me, but unfortunately, when I get back to the uh, computer and start looking, I often find I'm disappointed. So, unfortunately, with failing or less than perfect eyesight, I'm having to increasingly rely on having uh, decent autofocus working for me to actually ensure I get nailed focus. Anyway, join me when we get up the hill and uh, let. Ah, well, it's a bit bracing up here this morning. I think it's hovering around zero. Um, we've had quite a bit of frost over the last few mornings. Uh, there is still a little bit of ice on the puddles, but it's not, it's not enough to harden things up. So there's a bit of mud to contend with, which as you're aware is my least favorite thing. So, as I said on the intro, my objective today is, or objectives are twofold. The first is I want to put the 16 to 35 on and at probably 16 or 18 mil get really quite tight in on this little tractor which is sitting minding its own business in the woods here and uh, by getting close into it I'll be able to demonstrate how the uh, focal length being really quite wide or at least the angle of view being wide the focal length being quite short produces an overemphasis, possibly, or at least a, um, an increased emphasis on the, uh, the actual subject matter, in this case, the little tractor. And with a bit of careful framing, I might well be able to get some uh, components in the background that add to the frame. So when I've walked the basically mile to where I'm going, or where it is, uh, I'll bring you back online and uh, talk to you about that and how and what I frame up and see where we go with that. But the second part to today um, <clears throat> is that the Sony 90mm 2.8 um, FE auto macro lens, autofocus macro lens, that I've just acquired. I had one before, about three years ago, and I loved it. And I didn't use it that much, uh, which is probably true of most of the lenses I've got, but to be honest, does that really matter um, as long as they're there when you need them? The rather inexpensive Samyang 100mm that I bought ooh, about a year ago now, I've been very happy with it, except on occasions I found that I'm not hitting focus properly. And being a macro lens, focus really is quite an important thing. And uh, I've come away from several attempts to use it a little bit dissatisfied with what I've got, partly because um, having such a narrow depth of field, even at quite small apertures, it's um, if I don't get the focus perfectly right and take enough shots to focus stack it, the focus stacking fails and I end up with sort of blurry or out of focus areas in between the parts that are in focus. And I can't be doing with that. It spoils the shots and consequently I get an unusable image. So I reinvested in the 90mm Sony lens and 
because I can choose where the focus point is on the screen using touch, touch screen, um, I can rapidly set different parts of the picture that I want to ensure in focus and then get them shot, happy in the knowledge that being an autofocus lens, it's going to nail it. And I had a brief play with it yesterday, some flowers in the garden, and that was pretty much what I was finding. It did do that. So I'm going to give the, the pair of the lenses a bit of a comparative test today as well and throw that in on the end of the video. So let's get to where I need to be and get some shots taken. Well, as I was saying back at the house, the lighting conditions are quite low, the sun's quite low, and it's uh, quite warm still in terms of light colour. And it's actually lighting up all these trees at a low angle. So if I spin you around, let you have a look. Look at all those beautiful shadows crossing the track here. And also these trees lit up by the early morning sun. Absolutely stunning. Might just stop and take a picture of that. Uh, which isn't part of the video, but I might just do it anyway to hear a hell of it, because we're only here to take pictures and that's part of the fun, so I'll do that. Well, what do you know? I've come up here, I'm about 150 yards from where the little tractor is parked up at the side in this clearing behind you guys and there's a team of guys taking it apart to put it on a low loader. So I missed my opportunity. Who'd have thought it? I've been coming up here all winter and every single day I could have taken pictures of it. A couple of times I have. I come up specifically today to actually take pictures of it and I can't. So I'm just going to have to make the most of what else there is here. It's a funny time of year for photography. Uh, mainly because it's not quite spring yet. There's a tiny amount of showing of new growth, but very little in the scheme of things. And it's coming on the end of winter. So consequently, all of the bracken, all of the leaves that are still hanging on the trees are just hanging there brown and dead. So I'll see if I can get anything. There's some nice trees here. These are Scots pines with the early morning light on. Look quite interesting. And there's a van coming now, so I'll stop. Well, to carry on where I left off, um, I've come up here. And the guys, actually, I, I indirectly know quite a few of them, being local. And they're taking the whole tractor apart. They're actually literally cutting it apart. And they put it on a trailer over here to take it away and dismantle it and sell the parts. But uh, it's a bit of a shame. But there is just behind me here one tractor, which isn't in as good condition as the one I wanted to photograph. but. It's still an interesting proposition, so I'm going to set up and take a few shots. I'm not going to vlog this because obviously the guys are working here and it's a bit intrusive for them. So I'll, I'll cut it short there and I'll show you the pictures. Well, that was a bit of a shame, really, that uh, the old tractor's been cut up into pieces and sold for scrap. But I met the two guys doing it and they're local lads. Um, I know various people that they know, although I've never met these two guys before. They've been working this land for years doing logging producing basically products from wood, cropped wood as it is here. And uh, it's hard work. It's been done for centuries on this particular part of uh, Kent in this particular area. Various things, fencing, palings, um, charcoal, barbecue, wood, and so on and so forth. Garden furniture, the whole shebang. But a couple of real decent blokes, it was down to earth, easy, nice blokes to some talk to have a chat with, found out quite a bit of history of what's happened up in the woods over the years, um, pointed out that there'd been a big fire which I didn't know about although I've lived here for 30 odd years, um, which took out half of the stand of um, 
these Scots pines that um, I often am inside and photographing. So that, that was all very interesting. I thought it best not to vlog particularly well. I was close to the tractor because not everybody wants somebody photographing what they're doing. Uh, it's not to everyone's taste to be on a camera. Personally, um, I'm increasingly finding it easy to be talking to camera, but a lot of people are a bit nervous. I was at the start when I started this channel, but uh, time changes, things move on. So I'm going to go back. Um, I'll put a picture up of the tractor that I intended to take more pictures of, uh, but now it's in a series of pieces, so it can't really be done anymore. Anyway, um, I'll put the pictures up now, or at least in the next few seconds, that you have a look, and comments as usual would be appreciated, and also a thumbs up if you like the channel, because it does help. It uh, gives me more confidence that people are enjoying the material I'm putting together, and that makes it easier for me to carry on. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and we'll move on and upward. 